David Smith here with one more Flip Classroom Math video. Three tips before we start. You could turn on the captions and watch my words go by on the screen. That helps. You could also speed up the playback if you can get through the video faster and still comprehend. Lastly, you could pause video at any time and catch up on your notes. Today, we're going to take a look at a Voronoi diagram, but we're going to use it to answer a different question, namely, the toxic waste dump problem. This is kind of a famous problem. In a sense, it's a problem like this that caused this mathematics to come into existence. So it was solving this kind of a problem. And it's actually a pretty reasonable real problem. So here it is. Three towns need to locate a toxic waste dump that is far as possible from each town. So, you know, town A might not care if the waste dump is right next to B because it's kind of far from A, but B's going to care. So we're assuming that these three towns need a toxic waste dump that's at least convenient for all of them. I mean, they could locate it way, way over here, but then that's kind of not super convenient. So we're going to look for a place in this area that's the best place for that toxic waste dump so that it's as far as possible from each of the three towns, but accessible. Because toxic waste isn't a good thing to be close to. So there's a key point here. First off, let's talk about the towns. We have A, B, and C, and I've marked them on the graph already, A, B, and C. Now, you want to be careful when you add your notes. We're going to use this one graph for the entire lesson. So you want to make a nice, accurate graph. Make it a little bigger on your paper so you have room to move around and mark things. Okay, so the key point is that the toxic waste dump, the best location for it is where the, the, the boundaries of the Veroni diagram intersect. So you remember that when we did that other three region Veroni di Veroni, Veronoi diagram, um, that it had an intersection where all three boundaries met. That's where we put the toxic waste dump. So um, the first step is to find the midpoints of the segments that connect the three towns. So you have all the coordinates. Boom, boom, boom. They're on the graph. So what I want you to do is pause the video and find those midpoints. I'm not going to do the calculation to keep the video short, but you can do it and I'll put the results up in a second. So pause the video and do that calc. Okay, so here's the results. The midpoint of segment AB is 3, 5, of segment BC is 5, 4, and segment AC is 3, 2. So if you didn't get those results, look over your calcs and see where you made a mistake. Next step. Find the slopes of those three segments. So you can do that graphically. You can just look at the graph and count up and over and get your slope that way. That's a nice quick way to do it. It helps if you have graph paper. Or you can use the slope formula. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So pause the video now and calculate the slopes of the three segments. Okay, here are my results. The slope of segment AB is 1. The slope of segment BC is undefined because BC is this one. It's a vertical line, undefined slope. And then the slope of AC is negative one half. So if you didn't get those, take a look at your calcs or look at your graph paper and see what went wrong. Okay, next step, find the reciprocals of the above slopes. So we want to find the reciprocals of these three slopes. And where we're going is we need to construct perpendicular bisectors of these three segments that we've been looking at. So this I'll just do with you. Actually, pause the video. You should be able to just look at these slopes and find the negative reciprocals of them. Okay, let's see how you did. The negative reciprocal of 1 is just negative 1. We went over that in the last Voronoi diagram lesson. The negative reciprocal of an undefined slope is 0. And that makes sense because BC has an undefined slope because it's a vertical line. So the line that bisects that is going to have a zero slope because it's going to be a horizontal line. And then the last one, negative reciprocal of negative one half is negative two over one, change the sign. That slope is just going to be two. And I'm leaving this up on the side because we're going to use this in later steps. The next step is to use the above info, namely our midpoints and our negative reciprocals to draw or plot. So plot would be if you're doing it on graph paper and you can be exact, so you could plot it. Otherwise, drawing it would be on a hand graph like the one I've done.
But what you want to do is use that info to, to draw or plot the perpendicular bisectors of the three segments that we've been playing with. So what I did here in advance of that is I've marked my endpoints. These are my towns that want to be far from the toxic waste dump. And I've also put little dots for the midpoints of, those, of the segments that connect each of the towns. So I'm going to use those midpoints and these negative reciprocal slopes to draw the perpendicular bisectors. So go ahead and pause the video and give that a shot. Let's see how you did. Okay, so I dashed my lines in. I tried to be nice and accurate so that I could get the right thing. And I made my dashed lines and I made a little notation. So that's the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Remember, AB is this, a line here. I didn't draw it because it starts getting really confusing really fast if you draw the segments. So I just drew the bisectors. So this bisector is perpendicular to and cutting in half segment AB. And that makes sense. That's a good one for that. This one is the perpendicular bisector of BC right here. And that makes sense. This is a horizontal line. It's bisecting a vertical line. So that makes sense. So that's this guy here. And then this one is the perpendicular bisector of AC, which is this segment. So it's cutting this segment in half in a perpendicular way. Okay, the next step is to take a look at your diagram of all these perpendicular bisectors on there and figure out which lines are the correct boundary lines between the regions. And that will create our Voronoi diagram. So go ahead and pause the video and give that a shot. Let's see how you did. So I erased the dashed lines I didn't need and I filled in the dashed lines that are my Voronoi diagram boundaries. So check it out. It makes sense because this boundary separates A and B so all these points inside A are closer to A than they are to B. Makes sense. Same thing for this boundary. This is separating B and C. So all the points in here are closer to C than they are to B. That's good. That's part of our Voronoi diagram. And lastly, this boundary separates C and A. C and A. So all these points are closer to C, or closer to A than they are to C. So that's our diagram. We did that in the last lesson. And this shows us, like, if this was a, a hospital, then everybody in here would be closest to this hospital. Same for B. If that was a hospital, then everybody in this zone would be closest to that hospital, and so on. But we're answering a different question this time. Remember, it is, um, we have to find the vertex, right? So this point is the farthest away from all three points in our, in our town. So if we put the toxic waste dump right there, it's the maximum distance away from A, B, and C, and it's gonna make all these towns happy because they're not, they're farthest away as they can be. Okay, the next step is to actually go ahead and find the coordinates of this point. Now, you can make a pretty good guess by looking at the diagram, especially if you're on graph paper. It's pretty easy to tell what that point is, but I can't promise you that every problem will be nice and easy that way. So we really need to teach you the technique. So whether you're using a GDC to do this or whether you're using algebra, the first thing you have to do is find the equations of the perpendicular bisectors. So these three lines have equations and, oh, tripped on the guitar. They have equations and to find this point, we have to set one equation equal to the other and solve for x and then plug that x back into an equation to get y and that will give us our coordinate points. So, what you're going to need to do right now is figure out these equations. And I'm going to talk about this one first because this is dead easy. That's a horizontal line. It has the equation of y equals something. That's right. It goes to the point 5, 4. The y value is 4. So this line here is y equals 4. So we have our BC line equation is y equals 4. Now, that's not going to do us too much good. What we really need are these two equations because they're the ones we can set equal to each other. So remember this. You have a slope and a point for each of these perpendicular bisectors. Here's the point. The perpendicular bisectors go through the midpoint. And here's the slope of that perpendicular bisector. So I'm going to do the first one, but then I'm going to have you do the second one. So, to find the A, B perpendicular equation, we're going to use 
y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And we do a plug-in, a little algebra, and we have our equation. So for the point AB, here we are, AB, our midpoint is 3, 5, that's our point, and our slope is negative 1. So we're going to have y minus the y value, 5, equals the slope, negative 1 times x minus the x value, which is 3. So let's work that. y minus 5 equals negative x plus 3. Right? I'm distributing my negative 1 on my negative 3, so that's plus 3. Add 5 to both sides, I get y equals negative x plus 8. So that's this equation, y equals negative x plus 8. Now pause the video and find the AC equation in the same way. So let's see how you did. Here's my algebra. I did, I did the same steps I did with the last one, but a little different. Um, and I wind up with y equals 2x minus 4. So if you didn't get that, rework your algebra. Make sure you can do this calculation. Okay, so what I did is I added that equation here. So we're almost done. Here's our reference material. Boy, we've generated a lot of stuff. And here's our three equations. So now we're going to derive and find that point. At this point, if you have your graphic display calculator, you could just put these two equations in there, graph them, and use the calculator to tell you the coordinates of the intersection. And that's fine, and it's allowed on IB exams on my tests during the homework. You can do that. So if you prefer that, that's great. I love my algebra, as you know, so I'm going to go ahead and do it algebraically just because I think that's cool. Okay, so I wrote our final step here. Use the equations to find the point of intersection. So you're going to use these two equations, set them equal to each other. Remember why we can do that? The point of intersection will satisfy both equations. So whatever x is on here, it's going to give you the same y as the x on here because they actually have the same point. So we can set this equation equal to that equation and solve for x. So go ahead and pause the video and do that. Okay, let's see how you did. Here are my steps. I set the equations equal to each other. I manipulated them and I solve for x. So I know that the x coordinate of the intersection point is 4. So now all I got to do is put 4 into one of the two equations and solve for y and I'll have my point. So pause the video and do that. Ta-da! We're there! I bet you thought we'd never get here, but we are. Okay, so here's my work. What I did is I took my 4 from the solution for the x-coordinate, and I put it into that equation. And so what I got was 2 times 4 minus 4 gives me 4. So my intersection point is 4, 4. And if you look on the diagram, I went ahead and marked it 4, 4. It's pretty much what we could have read from the graph, but it's nice to have a, have a confirmation of what it really is, just in case it was a smidgen off one way or the other. So there you have it. Now, I'm not going to demo this problem, but be ready for it. You might be asked to find out how far from this point for the toxic waste dump, like town B, might be. Now, you have the information. You know this is 4, 4, and B was, B looks like B is 5, 7. So you can just calculate the distance between those two points, and that would show up. Okay? Thanks for watching. Toxic waste dump. Now that you've watched the video, take a moment to write down any remaining questions so you can bring them to our next class. Also, remember that you can come back to this video, watch it again if you want to deepen your understanding or fill in any gaps. Lastly, if you enjoyed yourself, please click like or subscribe.